I believe our churches are full of Christians. But I believe what the church needs, what this church needs, would be Christ followers. There's a difference between being a Christian and being a Christ follower. There's a difference between giving your life to Christ at the altar or at camp. Wake up and get your fire insurance for heaven. And being a Christ follower. Because being a Christ follower means I've decided to follow Christ. I thank God for everyone that, that they've given their life to Christ. And their, their sins have been forgiven. And the, they've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is the seed that we need to plant. But to be a Christ follower means my life is changed. Not my eternal destination has changed. My life has changed. See, we can't confuse interests with commitment. See, when someone's interested in something, they'll do it when it's convenient. But when you're committed to do something, you will not allow excuses to come in the way. And so often our faith is interesting, but it's not a commitment. Because being a Christ follower means I am committed to the person that saved me. I'm so glad we do not live in a culture as India that you would die for your faith. You would get excommunicated from your family if you gave your life to Christ. In this civilization, it's popular to even become a Christian. There's approximately 7 billion people on the planet and almost 2 billion of those 7 billion claim to be a Christian. Claim to be a Christian. Our life a life that could have been, but never was, is the, effectively a wasted life. If you could have done this, but you say, you know, God, I really don't want to do that. In God's eyes, he wants you to do something wonderful. But if we say, I really don't want to do that, for God's sake, it's almost a wasted life. But a life well lived is just simply small seeds of choices continually. See, it's easy to make the big choice. It's easy to make that big choice and that big understanding and you do it one time. But when we get down to where the rubber hits the road, do you know what life is all about? It's a series of single choices made over a continual time that the outcome is going to change your very destination. Simple choices. So my new normal today is to challenge you to follow Christ. Oh, I'd say most of us are believers. I'd say most of us know about Jesus. But it's not what I want to talk about. I want to say thank you for your faith. Every one of us should give our faith to Christ. But we, we need to do more than just follow faith. We need to follow Christ. I loved what the, the guy said, that there was a seed planted that day. A seed. In the scripture, in Matthew chapter 13, the seed is the word of God. There was a seed planted that day, and that seed changed everything. See, when that sower went out to plant seed, and the seed is the word of God, there's some types of ground that it hit on. One was the hard ground. You throw that seed out, and it's on rocky hard ground. And the birds came, and the birds ate that seed. But you planted it. You sowed it. You had no control over where the seed went, but you did plant that seed. And maybe it was in somebody's hardened heart. Maybe they're going through an issue in their life, and they have no desire for anything that you say because they are not there right now. Now, if you wait another six months, maybe the issue that they're hardened about will go away. But right now, you plant that seed. It's on hard ground, and it will not take root. But then sometimes it's on shallow ground. Shallow ground means it grows up quick and blossoms. It looks like it's awesome. But because there's no root system, the sun comes and the sun destroys the seed, des destroys the plant. That's sometimes where the church is. Sometimes we come to church and, and we give our life to Christ and all of a sudden we see some awesome Christians that are growing in their faith but then a calamity takes place within their life and an issue takes place and 
they get burned up, and they get burned out, and they walk out the door. Sometimes we even put those individuals in a leadership position, but when something happens and a calamity takes place, their faith isn't strong, their root system isn't strong, and that's when pain takes place. And that's when people say, I've tried the church thing. I've been in the church thing, and I did this, and it just didn't work. It's because sometimes our roots are not deep enough. But then sometimes we throw that seed, and it's on good ground, but there's weeds in that ground. And the weeds come around as that growth starts taking place. It just chokes the weed chokes the seed which never allows the plant to grow so they die and sometimes in our church the word of God is planted in, you, in your life in your heart and things take over life gets busy finances are tough your marriage stinks your job is worthless and you think I thought I gave my life to Christ and when I gave my life to Christ, I thought that the weeds would go away and I would thrive. I wish there was a magic pill that I could give to you and say, you take this pill and your life will be wonderful. But life is a series of simple choices made over a long period of time. The weeds are tough. But then sometimes you sow that seed and that seed is on wonderful ground. And when you plant that seed in wonderful ground, what happens? It goes four, five, even 50 times. So when we look at what the seeds can do, I want to read Matthew chapter 13. It says this. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some of the seed fell wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony place where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up and they were scorched, and because they did not root, they withered away. And they fell among the thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some 100 and some 60 and some 30 fold. A life well lived stems from the way that we perceive our heart. And the way that we perceive God. So my new normal. If I have decided to follow Jesus. Or if I'm going to be a Christ follower. What does that look like? How can I do that? What should I do? Well look at, in James chapter 2. Verses 14 through 17. See I believe this is so important to our faith. And to our church. I, it's, it's not about trying to motivate you. It's trying to compel you. Trying to see that this is what God really wants for our life. If there's areas in your life that you're struggling with and you've given your life to Christ, but you're saying, where have I had victory? Why am I still in my defeat? Why am I so unsatisfied with the direction of my life? I will say it's because you're a child of God, but you're not a Christ follower. We need to be Christ followers. The Bible says in James chapter 2, what does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother and sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, depart in peace and be warm and filled, but you do not give them things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Those also, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's dead. Works is, is, is action. I believe we do in marriage counseling, we say love is a verb. I also say faith is a verb. Faith is action. So how do I know what to do? Let me give you a couple of thoughts. The first thing is we need to study what Jesus' tendencies are. If we're going to be a Christ follower, we should know what he has done. We can't, we can't sit here on a Sunday morning and listen to a sermon and know everything about Jesus. But here's what you can do. You could take one month, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You could take one month, read three chapters a day, and go through the entire Gospels of four Gospels. And you could highlight in your Bible, and I believe in highlighting. Anybody have a highlighter around you? I believe in highlighting. 
Highlight the Bible. But here's what. Highlight his tendencies. What did Jesus do? How did he do it? Why did he do that? And highlight Jesus. Because if we're going to be a Christ follower, you're not a Bruce follower. You're not a Glenville follower. You're a Christ follower. So we should know what Christ did. And Christ is all over the Gospels. So reading three chapters a day for 30 days and just highlighting the tendencies of Jesus will do great things for you. Reading his words will talk to you about what he has for you. You know, when we were preparing, back in, back in the years when we played sports, uh, we would have a defensive team and an offensive team. We'd have a defensive coach and an offensive coach. And when we go into the defensive coach's uh, room, you know what the defense was learning? They weren't learning how to play defense. They were learning the tendencies of the offense that they were going to play. And the offense, when they go into the offense's room, they're going to learn what run, what pass, what play we would run because of the tendencies of the defense. Sometimes when we learn the tendencies of those around us, we can learn about them so much more, and we can be so much more successful. We have to learn his tendencies. And I believe when we learn his tendencies, read his word, we listen to his voice. The Bible says the sheep hear his voice. And they know his voice. Hear his voice. That, you may not hear an audible voice, but you hear the planted spirit. Of you need to serve, or you need to help, or you need to encourage. God speaks through his word. God speaks through other individuals. God speaks through friends. God speaks through music. He uses wise counsel. But when you listen to others, I think sometimes when you listen, God can do great things. So study his tendencies. Listen to his voice, and then act on his word. Act on his word. James chapter 2 verse 14 states this, that faith should be accompanied by action. Faith should be accompanied by action. If in other words, faith is dead, what is, it, what is wrong if you do not serve? If, if you don't talk? If you do not share? We have our faith in Christ, but following after Christ is something totally different. Listening to Christ is something totally different. See, when you apply the word or when you act on the word, it's very simple. I want to do this, but God wants me to do this. I have to decide what I am going to do. What if I don't know? Well, then we have to get into the word. You have to act on the word. If I am wrong, I'm wrong. And I'm wrong many times. Because there's a lot of things that I want to do that God doesn't want me to do. But when he tells me what I should do and how I should do it, I must follow after his word. So we have to act on his word. When we want to do something, uh, I, as a youth director for so many years, um, people would ask questions. And I'd always have this simple answer to their question and they never did like it. And uh, the question was whatever, but the answer is, what does the Bible say about that? And I, and I then, well, just tell me. I said, no, 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 that's not how it works. I'm not going to tell you because if I tell you, you're not going to do it. It's not what I'm telling you. It's what does the Bible say about it? And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you about five or six scriptures, and I want you to read these scriptures, and you tell me what Jesus would want you to do. So they'd go off and they'd come back on a Wednesday or a Sunday and I'd say, did you read the scriptures? Yeah. Did you break up with her? No. <laughs> they knew what the scriptures were, but they didn't want to do what the scriptures said. And when you do not do what the scriptures say, sometimes our life are small, simple choices that either go out of the way or it makes the way. But it's the choices that we make. So let's look at what are some important assumptions that we can make about following Christ. And we have to know these assumptions. If we got to follow his tendencies, we have to look at his assumptions. Here's there. His will for me is always good. He loves you more than anyone else. 
He wants you to love him. He wants his will to be within your life. His will is always good. Not sometimes. Not every once in a while. In every area of your life, his will is good. Now, we may not understand it. And there may be things going on in your life that you're saying, that, that stinks. But what we have to do is we have to get on our face before God and say, God, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why I'm in this calamity. But Lord, I know that I'm going to be faithful to you. I know even if I am hurt, you will be strong. Because listen to the scripture in Isaiah chapter 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I guarantee you, this family in India that was killed by saying their faith is in Jesus Christ, they didn't understand. And in our hearts, we would not understand that. But as a missionary... As somebody that says, I will sacrifice my all to spread the seed of my faith. Whatever the cost, whatever they need, they are willing to go in harm's way to do what God wants them to do, to plant the seed. Guarantee you, at the end, when the village gave their life to Christ, they are lifted up in heaven. They are rejoicing that every seed that was planted by them has planted and grown and now a village, a city, a state is a follower of Jesus Christ. They're not just Christians. They're followers of Christ. So when somebody says, are you a Christian? That's a pretty vague statement. I would love to have you give this answer. No. I'm not just a Christian. I'm a follower of my Lord Jesus Christ. With power, with passion, no, I am more than just a Christian. There was more to my life than coming to this altar, praying a prayer and asking Jesus to forgive me of my sins. I've done that. But since then, I have been challenged that I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Not just fire insurance, not just Sunday morning church, but to be the Lord of my life life. God's will is perfect. Sometimes we don't understand it and sometimes we even hide from it. Sometimes we even run away from it because what we need is God's will within our life. But what we understand is pain. It's hurt. And here's a big one. Sometimes he just wants you to get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes he's saying, you know what? You've sat and soured too long. I don't care if you've been a Christian for five days or 50 years. You're not done. A Christ follower follows Christ. Till his death, he will follow Christ. But listen to this. Do with this assumption. His will for me will help others around others. His love for me, his will for me, will help others that are around me. God's blessing is always, always surrounded by others. When God blesses you and your will is under God's hand, it will always bless others. It will always bless your family. It will always bless your surroundings. God's will for you will always bless others if you're submissive to it. And here's what we have to do. Decide in advance that you will act on his word. And you will follow through. We have to decide in advance that you're going to act on his word. Because in the emotional time, in the dry season, in the time that you're praying and you feel like there's no hope and you feel like I'm all alone and you don't really hear God and we're fighting about this and we're struggling with that and we're just trying to survive in our faith and I really didn't, I don't even want to get up on Sunday mornings to go to church and it, it just seems like there, there's no power in your faith. Even in those dry times, even when those emotions are going crazy, we have to decide, am I a Christ follower? And if I am a Christ follower, 
That means I have decided to follow Jesus. Although none go with me, even if I'm by myself, I will follow Christ. See, if you think about the passion of his life. He came to this earth for one purpose. And that was you. He came to die for you. He gave you forgiveness. He allowed the reconciliation from man to God through the cross of the shedding of his blood. And when we accept what he has done for us, became a Christian, he died. He was risen. And on his ascension act in heaven, he says, go. Go make disciples. And my authority and my power will be with you. He didn't say this. Go back to the house. Go enjoy church. Go play Christianity. He says, I need you to change the world. Not just change Glenville. Not just change South Wichita. I need you to change the world. And that mandate was given to the church. Sometimes, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I shouldn't say this. But sometimes being your pastor... Get up and work. 30% of the church doing the work. 20% of the church given to the work. We're not Christ followers. We're Christians that come to church. If we, the church, was a Christ following church, the gates of hell would be scared of Glenville. Because we have the power and the authority to change this world. Not if we sit and sour in our seats. I'm in a good mood. I really am. <laughs> but what I want is I want our church to be different. I want our church, when I went to that other church, and I did the, re, the evaluation of the other church, and, and they, they listened to what I had to say. They made some changes, and, and they started moving on fire. I came back to this church. I started looking with fresh eyes at this church, and I said, we need to make some changes. We need to have the power and the authority and the ability to, if it works, let's do it better. If it's dead, let's dismount. Let's change what we need to change to make the church the best it could be. That's what we have to do. God has given us a mandate to change the world. God has given us a mandate to change the church. God has given us a mandate to change your life. And that mandate is this. It doesn't do us any good to have faith if our faith does not work. It makes no difference. We may have our fire insurance and we may go to heaven but we'll never change the world. We'll never change our kids' lives if they don't see the faith in us. We will never be able to do what God wants us to do if all we do is come to church on Sunday. Christianity is not about church. Christianity is about Jesus. Filling the altars with emotion doesn't change somebody's life. It's when you get off these altars and you make a decision that when something takes place within my life, when a calamity happens, I am not going to run away from God. I'm going to run to God. So often, when a calamity takes place in somebody's life, they get hurt. They have sin in their life. And they get found out. It's very easy that they start turning away from the church. They go find another church where somebody doesn't know their stuff. Because the church, the church, what we need to do is we need to love them. We need to encourage them. We need to motivate them. We need to let them be accountable to you. But we need to motivate them to follow after Christ. Not leave and wander around and five years from now find another church and hope everything's okay. No, the tenderness of a family is this. I'm going to walk with Christ. What is the tendency of Jesus? 
I'll tell you what the tendency of Jesus is. Jesus did not like the religious leaders of the day. He was more mean to the religious leaders of the day being hypocritical and pompous than he was the sinner at the well. Than he was the woman caught in adultery. Than he was the lame man, the blind man. He walked up to them. He loved them. He says, where are thy accusers? She looks up. Nobody's around. He goes, neither do I accuse you. And then he says this, go, sin no more. He doesn't leave her where she is. There was an encounter with Jesus. If we want to see what Christ wants us to do, it's learn the tendencies of Jesus. And that is being genuinely open and honest towards God and an open heart towards others. That when you plant the seed of the Word of God at work, at home, at school, or at the restaurant, make sure that seed is one that's planted in solid ground. And that solid ground starts with you. Follow Christ. Plant the Word of God wherever you go. Being a follower of Christ is different than just being a Christian. And I know that being a Christian sometimes gets old. You feel like you're in a habit. You feel like you're just doing the deja vu. That's being a Christian. Nope. Try something new. Try not just being a Christian. Try to do something fresh. Powerful. Try being a Christ follower. We just showed you right now media. Thousands and thousands of videos. If you're dry, if you feel like, man, I just don't have any faith. I just feel like I'm going through the motions. Get off center. On purpose, get off center. Do something different. If your faith and your life is dry. You're maybe a Christian, but you need to be a Christ follower. And let Christ knock you off center so you are on your back so he can come alongside you and love you and pick you up and love you and restore you. And then, because you needed him, he's going to come alongside you and love you. Then, maybe then, you will follow him. I have decided to follow Jesus.